Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the medium time frame where we are looking for a 5 wave impulsive structure to the upside, after which we expect a bigger correction to the downside and in a bullish environment we want to see continuation and in a bearish scenario we will go for lower prices. The question is, when is this wave 5 finished? And as you can see I have three different scenarios on my chart and based on the low time frame and the micro count coming up, we can basically estimate the probabilities of these different scenarios. Now the first is that this wave 4 is already finished and wave 5 is already finished. So wave 4 ended over here with then a triangle A, B, C, D, E. This is your wave 5 to the upside reaching the 1 to 1 which is a target for a wave 5 and after this 1 to 1 is respected we're now in a 1, 2 and we're going to be looking for lower prices to the downside in an impulsive structure. The second scenario is the yellow line where wave 4 is not yet finished. So we're basically working on a more complex structure in a W, X, Y or an A, B, C, making another low or at least taking the double bottom over here that we have around 35.5k and then we want to see another move towards the upside. Now this would of course be more bullish as then we do expect a bigger structure to the upside to at least hit the most common target area for a wave 5 which is between the 1.236 and and the 1.618 pulled from the high to the low over here, which is between 38.7k and 40k. And then the current uh, purple line, the pink line over here, this is a wave 1, looking for a 2, and then we're looking for a 3, 4, 5. And that means higher prices as for wave 3, most commonly you want to see the 1.618 being hit, which if you take a 1.618 from this low to the high and then have a little look at you know the common targets for a potential wave 2 down here then you can see that the 1.618 is always going to be higher than this green 1.618 so we can expect higher prices and the maximum target for a wave 5 is the 0 0.618 over here at 43.7k and it is also in confluence with this golden target box up here this golden target box is between 42.9k and 43.6k and the ones below that will surely act as some resistance is this golden one 38.5, 39k, then the blue one 39.3, 39.7 and then finally this blue one 40.3 to 40.6k. If we then zoom in to the micro bearish scenario which follows the yellow line where we're looking for a move to the downside before then continuation to the upside, we are looking at a complex sideways structure in preferably a WXY 3 3 and then another three wave structure to the downside instead of the ABC that I have on my chart because the ABC has lower probabilities compared to the WXY because this wave B over here in blue has an internal flat structure over here and following Elliott Wave International that means a flat has a lower probability meaning the bigger flat that is in an ABC if you have a flat in wave B over here then it has a lower probability. Now in this scenario we're looking for a bigger three wave structure right W or A has a running flat over here then we're looking for another flat in B or X and then for a wave Y to the downside you want to see either a zigzag flat or a triangle. Zigzag meaning a 535 structure to the downside then continuation for a flat you're going to be looking for something like this where of course and also the target boxes above are going to play an important role as resistance before then an impulse to the downside over here which can make people very scared but then the nice thing is is that it is actually a buying opportunity for then a way five to the upside right tricking people in a high and then a move to the downside also by the way this looks of course like an impulsive structure that is finished if you're going to do this and then immediately move down probabilities are very high that this is a fake top it's a wave b top in an expanding flat and this move is not a wave a or one but it's actually a wave c and then we can look for price to move to the upside and the final option for wave y is then a bigger triangle for a wave c you want to see an impulse to the downside that at least takes the low of wave w or a here which is the double bottom which is at 35.5k now in the bullish scenario we're looking for the purple, the pink line over uh, showed earlier, right? Where we then have an A, B, C, D, E finished triangle scenario here. This is your wave one that is finished. Looking for a retracement in a wave two, preferably going to the 05 to the 786 area taken from the low to the high here of wave one, because this is the most common target for a two sitting between 37K and 36.2K, after which we then want to see continuation to the upside in a wave three. 
Now we do have some confluences. The 3A2 is a less common target for a wave two, so we have to keep that in mind, but it is in confluence with the blue target box here, 37.2, 37.4. But around that golden pocket area, we do have this blue box in between the golden pocket 786, still common target area for a two, 36.3K to 36.5K. If you then look at the micro scenario and we zoom in to the 15 minute over here, then what we're looking for really is this to be a potential one or a wave to the downside on the three minute time frame. It is possible to count this as an impulse. Then we're looking for a three wave structure to the upside over here for a wave B or a wave two. And then we're looking for a C or a wave three to the downside. The invalidation would be for price to take this high over here. And if it takes the high, we're of course looking for resistance in this area as well, the golden target box. But you can also see that the wave C target area that I put on my chart is in confluence with this blue box over here, sitting between 37 to 37. 0.4k and that is because of the resistance that we have above price at the moment and also the 886 touches so when we look at the micro scenario here we have some resistance first of all filling the gap right we entered this gap first of all this is the gap as you can see on the 50 minute big candle to the downside then a next candle close creating a gap over here inefficiency right now we tested the gap once, rejected, twice, rejected. However, when you enter it for a second time, probabilities are high. We're going to fill this gap eventually. Just above over here on the five minute, you can see this white box that I have. That is a five minute order block over here, which is very interesting indeed, sitting between the 38.1 and 38.2K. And then we have the red line which is the key level I have on my chart. And the red line is the point of control of this little section of the chart. So these three together offer resistance. The golden pocket taken from the high to the low is right on top of this white box as well. And that could be a very interesting area to look for the high of a wave B or a wave two for then a move towards the downside. And if price would go to this key level over here, that is when the target area of wave C is gonna be in confluence with the blue box. So that is something that I'll be looking for in the micro. Of course, if we're looking for a wave three to the downside, we want to see this box being lost, price to move to the lower areas over here, at least hitting the 1.618, which is common, but preferably continue to the downside and reach the blue box as mentioned earlier down here. Another thing that is always good to know is the 886 that you see over here. This uh, Fibonacci is taken from this low to this high over here. And you can see that price retraced once, twice, three times to the 886. Now, once the 886 is hit, any move coming off the 886 to the upside in this case has a higher probability of being a wave C or a wave Y, which increases probabilities of a rejection in this area and to go down once again, because then we're looking for at least a three wave, if not an impulse to the downside, because if this is a higher probability of a C or Y, we eventually have a higher probability again to move to the downside because we're looking for this to be a corrective structure, right? And then when you expect another wave similar to the wave that we had over here. So the fact that the 886 has been hit twice, if price moves up, it adds extra probabilities of a rejection and a move to the downside to take all the lows that we have. Low 1, low 2, low 3, low 4, low 5. Quite crazy the amount of lows that we have over here. Of course, it is all probabilities. You need a plan, strategy, entry requirements, right? Something that gives you trust proof of resistance over here to enter potential shorts because if price is just going to do this on high volume bullish cvds building against resistance well we just simply look for continuation but it's all probabilities right and this is currently an interesting area for sure also in relation to the 886 touches that we have over here so if we then look at the probabilities of all these different scenarios, then on the medium time frame, generally, I'm still looking for a wave five. So a wave five that is not yet finished. So for me at the moment, this over here does not seem to be the high. So I am either looking for that yellow line on the medium time frame or the purple line. Those are the two that for me have the highest probabilities or rejection down and then move to the upside or continuation in that purple slash pink line. If we go to the low time frame, then we are in both scenarios interesting, uh, interestingly looking for a retracement, right? In a bearish scenario, 
we are looking for a deeper move to the downside in a Y can be a flat right where we do take the high once more, but at least we want to see a bigger move to the downside than a move up and a move down potentially, either a zigzag to the downside or a triangle. And also in the bullish scenario, we preferably want to see a wave two to the downside, which can be any corrective structure but a triangle. So also here, we are looking for a retracement based on the retracement to the downside. We can then estimate the probabilities of the bullish versus the bearish scenario. But to be honest, at the moment, the bearish scenario does carry a bit more probabilities compared to the bullish scenario. So this scenario over here. And then on the micro, quite simply, we are looking for those lows to be taken. Uh, and that then also adds the confluence for this particular scenario in a 1, 2 and then a 3 to the downside or an ABC because also of that 886. So on the micro here, take the lows has the highest probability at the moment based on what we see locally, mainly because of these uh, 886 over here. That adds extra confluence for price moving up in a C or Y. If it does move up, interesting area of resistance and then continuation to the downside has a lot of potential and we have to observe the reaction. If price does this, that's also fine because basically on the micro, what we're looking for is for price to take these lows over here and then we observe the reaction. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see at the next one. Bye-bye.